Coming up in this FinCast, we'll take a look at a dwarf cichlid that's even smaller than your tetras, but oh so lovable. Oh, I see better color, I see more activity, my fish breed. I have a full line pet store. I have fish tanks where I have epistogrammas breeding. I have fry. I have lots of fun stuff going on. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and we're continuing to look at our Tannin tank today which is a relatively new 55 gallon aquarium that I've set up and we're using botanicals which is essentially pods and leaves from the jungle from the Amazon rainforest that you put in the bottom of your aquarium and you make it look like the actual biotope that the fish came from. And we want to talk about one of the fish today that comes from the Rio Negro area uh, where the Rio Negro is one of the larger trip tributaries of the Amazon River. Uh, and this is a, a fish that we first saw in Mike Tuchinardi's video where he went snorkeling with tetras and we've done a couple of fin casts on that and we'll give you a link to it up above my head. Um, but this is called the checkerboard cichlid and it's a little dwarf cichlid that came in, they're, they're only about that big right now, um, and they're absolutely adorable. I bought a group of six of them, and they're doing extremely well in this biotope aquarium, and it's, it's kind of cool because you look at the video that Mike shot, and then you look at what the aquarium looks like and the way the fish are interacting with the environment around them, and it's really working out well, i got to tell you. So we've got the nice tannin-stained, tea-stained water, and, uh, and all these leaves, uh, catapa leaves, and different types of pods, uh, kavu pods, some other things. Uh, and the fish are moving around the aquarium and in and out of the driftwood and in and out of the branches. And they're, they're feeding on the biofilm uh, in the aquarium. And they're really a very engaging little fish. But what else do we know about them? What's the best way to keep them and so forth? And so let's take a look at the checkerboard cichlid. Of course, I'll put a lot of links uh, with the description of this video uh, down below, so please check that out there, and you can read more about it in greater detail. But typically, uh, the, the word on these checkerboard cichlids goes something to the effect of they like really low pH and they like really soft water. Uh, driftwood and botanicals create those conditions. Uh, my tap water, which is what I'm using in that aquarium, comes in at a pH of about 7.2. Something's going on in my tank. I'm quite sure just by using process of elimination that it is the Nat Geo substrate, the sand that I put in there from Nat Geo, and I think that that is raising the pH in my aquarium. But at any rate, um, I can tell you that I, I tested my water parameters this morning. The pH is 7.4. That's slightly high for the checkerboard cichlids. The KH and the GH are both measuring at 8. That's also high. Um, the nitrites uh, and nitrates are at 0 or 5 parts per million so so we've got very clean water uh, but it's not as soft as it's supposed to be uh, and the pH is higher than it's supposed to be and for what it's worth uh, this is a fish that likes warmer water uh, I'm keeping it at 75 degrees uh, a lot of what I've read online suggests that it ought to be at around 80 or more uh, I'm not necessarily trying to breed these fish and if I did breed the fish um, I'm not sure that you know that would be a great happenstance, but that's not my intent. Uh, the other thing that I've read is if you don't have these perfect water conditions, the fish themselves may be happy, but the eggs won't hatch or the fry won't survive. So I might be looking at that. I do have a source of RODI water that I use for my marine tank, but I really, you know, with all the aquariums that I maintain, I don't want to work that hard on this aquarium. Maybe I'll pull some out at some point and set up a smaller aquarium and, and run some RODI water and see if I can't create softer water conditions and, and see if we can't breed some, but that would be down the road. For now, I just want to talk about how cool this fish is and how engaging the fish is and tell you a little bit more about um, what we know from reading around the internet about this fish. This fish is also called the wire tail checkerboard cichlid and it's also been called the chessboard cichlid. Uh, the fish that I have in my aquarium are definitely juvenile, so I haven't seen the lyre tail yet, but uh, that's uh, something that the males develop as they get bigger. Um, it seems to be all over the place in terms of how big these fish actually get. Um, I've seen males as high as four inches and females as high as three. Um, more typically, 
uh, what I'm seeing is uh, information that says that the male will be uh, two and three quarters but less than three inches and females slightly smaller and that when they uh, do grow to sexual maturity the males do develop that beautiful wire tail tail which uh, with a blue tinge to it. Reproduction again relatively easy to breed if you get those premium water conditions that I do not have in my aquarium. Uh, very acidic, soft, high quality water, RO water uh, is what I'm hearing is essentially mandatory. There are a, a bunch of different uh, varieties of this fish but the Dichrosis filamentosa is the one that you're typically going to be able to find in the hobby. This is a fish that's been described as being delicate and difficult to get established. And if you remember when I released these into the aquarium, I mentioned that I wanted to really take my time with the acclimation process, which I did. And But they have been happy from the moment that they got out of the bag. But they are described as being very sensitive to water quality fluctuations and then said to be hardy once they get established in your aquarium. Uh, this is a fish that is described as having a lot of personality, and I would agree with that. Um, and, and really, you hear a lot of uh, people talking about how colorful they are. Right now, mine are mostly black and white, uh, but you do get the tinges of blue, especially in the male, as they get a little bit larger. These live in the Amazon River, the entire upper western portion of the Rio Ornico, and, and then also the central and upper Rio Negro region of Brazil. They're found in small forest streams where the bottom is covered with leaf litter and then also in tangles of branches and roots. And that's exactly uh, where we saw them in Mike's video. And that's the con those are the conditions obviously that we're trying to get in this aquarium with the exception of my water parameters which don't seem to want to play ball. And in terms of feeding, I've been feeding the community peewee pellets from Extreme and these fish are going nuts for it as well as, as with the extreme aquatic, uh, com it's called community crave flake food and they're going nuts for that as well. There's a lot of indication that these fish like live meaty foods like Daphnia and brine shrimp um, as well as frozen blood worms so that's something to seriously look at especially if you're interested in breeding. Petcha.com has some really good information on this especially if you're interested in breeding the fish and that will be uh, one of the links that I'll place for the description of this video. So by the way, uh, the uh, botanicals in this aquarium all came from a company called Tannin Aquatics, which is shipping these things all over the world now. It's kind of a new type of biotope aquarium that's, that's really catching on, and that's why I'm glad to be talking about it. Um, they have a really good resource page on their website, tanninaquatics.com, which talks about sort of the normal progression of what you can expect when you start dumping all these leaves and pods in your aquarium. And one of the things they talk about is biofilm, and I'm getting a really thick, almost like mucus, on, uh, on a lot of my leaves and pods. Uh, that's described as normal. Doesn't seem to be hurting the fish, obviously. So, uh, and, it, and eventually it will go away. It's not exactly the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, but, it, but it's there. Uh, but, it, but according to tannaquatics.com and from everything I've read, it, it does eventually go away. So I'm not too worried about that. What do you think of the tannin aquarium so far? Could you live with that tea stained water? Uh, so far, I like it. Uh, eventually, I may try to use some of the products that are out there on the market to see if I can take that tea stained water with all the botanicals in there and make that crystal clear water. I'm pretty sure that I can. But that's for down the road because that would be removing all the beneficial uh, tannic acid and all the other uh, micro elements, for lack of a better term, uh, that are making that water uh, exactly what the biotope is supposed to be. But it might be interesting to see, and there are some pictures of clear botanical aquariums out there. So, so that's something for down the road. But what do you think of that fish tank? What do you think of these little checkerboard cichlids? Uh, and by the way, if, if you if you looked. Um, you notice that I've got some epistogrammas in there and they get along very well with one another. The tetras that I have in there, the bleeding hearts and the blood fins, pay no attention to the cichlids and vice versa. They're all getting along very well in what is essentially a dwarf cichlid aquarium with some tetras. And, and I want to look around. Pencilfish is a fish that's mentioned often 
uh, as a fish that lives very well with these. So that might be something I'll be adding down the line as well. Not a particularly beautiful fish, but if it's part of the biotope, it's something to look at. So please do leave your comments down below. I hope you like this introduction to checkerboard cichlids. Maybe it's something you can look at. They're relatively inexpensive. And as, as I said, uh, they cost about $5 a piece when you can find them online. Mine came from the Wet Spot, which is a cichlid mail order uh, company based on, on the internet, and they are out of Portland, Oregon. That's all for now. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.